Is Rob hiding? Rob, we're going to call you out soon anyway. Because j- just to let you guys know, for three years, Rob has been impersonating Professor McLaughlin. And Professor McLaughlin's never really had a, a chance to like answer back. So we're, we're going to give Professor McLaughlin uh, a few seconds here to uh, answer back. Bill, we discussed this. You told me you were going to get somebody other than Bonaccio at the plane this year. I had to suffer through it two years ago, suffered through it again last year. I thought we agreed he's just not that good. And this whole thing about this red sweater, red sweater, red sweater, it is so overplayed. It's ridiculous. I'm getting so tired of it. Like I'll admit, occasionally I wear a red sweater. But I'm very fond of that red sweater. It was given to me, passed down to me, by my great, great, great grandfather. He was a lawyer. A lot of you know him. He invented the due process clause. He invented the protection clause. And he invented the uniform commercial clause. I'm very fond of my great, great grandfather's sweater. And this notion that I wear it all the time is just ridiculous. Everybody knows that from September to May, I only wear the sweater Monday through Friday. And I never wear it on the weekends. And during the summer, I hardly ever wear it. Maybe two, three times a week at most. And occasionally people say, gee, your sweater is all wrinkled, it's got creases. And, you know, occasionally when I'm sleeping at night, when I roll, I roll in a funny way, and I wake up in the morning and there's a crease. But after three or four days of wearing the sweater in the air, the crease is gone. I mean, it's, it's overplayed that they make a big issue about that. And the last thing, and this is something that you got to write down. That you can see the sweater doesn't have sleeves, like this ridiculous thing that Bonaccio wears. So I hope that we can clear the air on that. But i got to say that he hasn't been that big. And even in the first year when he did me, Ron Riccio came to me, and to Bonaccio's credit, he said, he said, Dennis, he said, take you on your best day, and Robert Bonaccio was better than that. <laughs> Maybe we're not going to be able to find anybody better than Robert to play me. Maybe next year I'm just going to have to play myself. So thanks a lot, Robert Bonaccio. You're a good man. Yeah, that was perfect. Perfect. Just, just what we needed. You think that'll get some laughs? Yeah, I think that'll get some laughs. No one will know. Well, listen. I said everything just the way you said, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Sure. All right. So, I mean, do you have, do you have my money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bill, it's twenty bucks. Well, yeah, twenty bucks. Bill, a hundred dollars, a C note. I'm a senior member of the faculty. Twenty dollars, you insult me. Maybe you can get Cornwell to trash the student for twenty bucks. I have to read off your stupid cue cards. I have to fish out this stupid and ridiculous sweater you wear. For 20 bucks, you are nuts. I'm through with you. I'm through with your graduating. The heck with you. The heck with the nacho. The heck with the whole place. You keep this lousy sweater. <laughs> Four years ago, that sweater had sleeves. 